on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle, big, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. It's a unique hustle, nigga, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. Name another podcast like this. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy, ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, outstanding, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nah, nah, you know my dad all going. Hey, man, hey, man. This man right here, man. I actually met him in Las Vegas, man. We was at the mm-hmm. convention, and I walked up on him. He had this big chain on, SOD, and I was like, man, who the hell is this dude, man? Check it, man. My boy Pancho G is in the building, man, with SOD. Man, what's up? What's up, man? What up, world? We here, man. SOD hey, Money Gang. SOD Money Gang, man. That's crazy. Uh, we definitely uh, want to just get into all into your business. You know what I'm saying? Uh, babe, what what you got for? We like to go back uh, before the music, before the comedy, I should say. Mm-hmm. Before everything, as a child growing up, where you're from, your parents, I need to know everything. Man, I'm from the south side of Chicago. I'm mm-hmm. from 75th King Drive, Gotti World. Wow. You know, stay to the lake. You know, Chicago boy, man. You know, Chicago dangerous. It, it's really not. Really? Yeah, it's really not. They be trying to get that to tell people that because there's a lot of black excellence in Chicago. Mm-hmm. So other cities don't see black excellence. But then when you tell people that it's dangerous, it makes people, the tourism, make people not want to come there. They want you not to come to see the, black don't excellence. see the black excellence. Like, mm. you'll go to certain places, they never seen a black man on a skyscraper. You'll go to Chicago, a black man on a skyscraper. Mm. So you don't have a lot of violence. It's violence, but it's like, everybody I was saying get killed in Chicago, we already seen them. Like, we already knew it was coming. Oh, okay. You, you know, because it's so loud and you hear it, like 32 people got shot or this got shot. You know, I, I come to realize, man, the real real, real violence is silence. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It ain't that loud, man. But the way people do, they try to make it out, like you said, propaganda and all that. It's something that's going on behind the scene that they trying to not get you to see. No, nah, they I don't want us that. to see. They don't want to see black ownership, black entrepreneurship. See the uh, black ownership. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a lot of black entrepreneurs in Chicago. Wow. Really? Mm-hmm. So you grew up seeing all of that? Because I know... We've owned a shop for about 15 years, and we've seen a lot of young kids grow up, become men and women. And they've always said to us they love the fact that they saw a couple, a black couple, being able to work together to do something good. And it made them feel like it's possible. So you tell me that you saw that a lot around you yeah. growing up. Yes. I always say, like, just hardworking black people. Like, Chicago, for us, it was discovered by a black man. Mm. You know, all the other cities were discovered by, like, a white racist guy. We was discovered by a black French man from Haiti. Even from Haiti. What's his name? DuSable. Okay. Yeah. That's good. So were you raised with your mom and dad? I was raised with my, uh, my mom, dad, my grandparents. My grandparents stayed right across the street from each other. My so dad you had a stayed good next community. door. Yeah, I had, you know, people in my life. That's good. Yeah. That's good. You know that's rare, right? Yeah. In this society right now. Yeah, but they all gone though. So God bless the God dead. God bless you. Yeah. Yes. But you know, I had that guidance to make me be strong and be here right now. What's you know? the main thing you've learned, whether from your mom, your dad, your grandma, that stuck with you through your journey? Uh like you know, don't let your left hand know what your right hand doing, mm-hmm. you know. And I ain't everybody business, you know. My daddy used to always say you ain't have no friends, so mm-hmm. I, I kind of believed him on that. You know, you always got, like, one good friend, and the rest of them is, like, they, you know, colleagues. Uh, but, you, you know, know, as a kid, when your parents used to tell you things, you hear them, but you don't really go by it till you have to go through it and you realize what they said mm-hmm. is true. So did you ever have to go through that bump to oh, yeah. realize? Yeah, yeah. You know, your parents ain't gonna tell you nothing wrong. Right. But then you get older, you realize, like, man, they wanna learn. Mm-hmm. You know, you gotta feel it yourself to order to learn. So tell me something that you went through as a child or as a teenager that um, with a betrayal or just anything that you went through that you had to learn from that somebody else might be going through it and really, you know, can so learn from your experience. I wanted to, I, I really wanted to key in on like, like being from Chicago, have you ever lost a friend, you know, the gang violence? Because the gang violence is real up there. Oh yeah, I lost one of my close friends uh, senior year of high school, like a week before prom. Break that down to us. Like, like what what was going on? Like you and, you and your close friend from high school, um, you know, 
y'all had plans to hang out the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. And so he was it something where he just was in the wrong place at the wrong time? He's at the wrong place at the wrong time. Him and uh, two other our friends, they was at a park a week before prom. And they was chilling at the park. And then, man, some dude came up to him, said, you know, start banging on him. And then shot at him and killed him. He got buried in his prom suit. Mm. Man, that's crazy. So, how was, I mean, how old was he? had to be about 17. Yeah, oh, yeah, 17. And you guys been knowing each other your whole time? In, since freshman, yeah. yeah. Since freshman in mm -hmm. high school. Yeah. Man, that's crazy, man. How was the city, like, like, during during the times when you see gang violence, some of the things, whether it be whatever gang may be, you know, how how is it like when you have to go to school and that they don't force you into the game? How did you stay out of the game, or did you stay out of the game? Right. I mean, I was I'm I'm like a street dude, so I was with people, but I wasn't like selling dope or nothing all that. I was selling watches and jewelry mm -hmm. and stuff. I did other things. Mm -hmm. CDs, movies, socks, face sets, DVDs. That's right, how I was. Right. That's what I was my hustle. But they'll be my friends. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, if them your homies, they gonna look out for you. They the, Your neighborhood look out for you. When you in a neighborhood, everybody know everybody. So they know who not to mess with and who to mess with. And then they know like they could die if, if they mess with certain people. They like, oh, they know, like, man, he ain't on nothing. You know what I'm saying? They, your neighborhood gonna look out for you. Mm -hmm. It was more close together. It was more together. Like, it was at times, like, you know everybody on your block. The whole neighborhood, your whole block, you would know everybody. So, well. It was, but growing up, like, what did you inspire, aspire to become? What did you want to become? Uh... I, my mother was a police officer, so I had wanted to be a police officer too. Mm -hmm. Did you try out? Uh, no, nah, I didn't. <laughs> nah. <laughs> but I remember being in seventh grade, though, I wanted to be a comedian too. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Were oh, you hilarious? As no, a kid? I really wasn't no, like, no class clown or nothing like that. I was silly sometimes, but that really wasn't my MO. Like, then why a comedian? I don't know. Like, you know, comedians, we all go through some type of dark, some. You know, mm -hmm. like I lost my whole immediate family. So right after my mother died, that's how I got in, kind of got into a comedy. And how old were you when your mom passed away? Uh, I was 29. 29? Yeah. So did, can you say you, you lost your whole immediate family? Did they all pass away back to back to back? You know, through the years. You through know, the years. From 08 to now, to, yeah, 2022. So it's just a way for you to channel all of that into something. Yeah, something productive. positive. Right. Yeah. Okay, that's yeah. good. So how was it like going out and actually doing it for the first time? Uh, comedy, I had, yeah, the, I had did like a year of open mics. And then after... In Chicago? No, actually in Vegas. I started okay. comedy in Vegas. Okay. And I did a year of open mics. And after the year of open mics, that's when I started doing shows. So I used to be a Blue Martini regular. That's in Vegas. That's one of the big clubs at the time. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, that was that was dope. That was my first big show. I wasn't nervous until I got all, after after the set. Mm, why? I don't know. It's like damn, I just performed in front of like two hundred people. So after the set, that's when I started shaking and everything. How was the crowd acceptance they, of they, you? They they love me. They love it. Yeah, they like. And then my first competition, I had won. So when I had won my first competition, I felt like this for me. Mm. But um, so did you ever get in the first in the first year for open mic? Did you ever get booed? I never been booed before. Never. Never been booed. Wow. I've been heckled, that's but the, I never been booed. Same thing. Uh, Carlos Miller said he never right. been booed. So that's a good that's a good track mm. record to say. Mm. How long have you been actually doing comedy? Uh, four years now, like professionally, wow. like four years. Um, what? <sighs> Cause I see you uh, on your IG with a whole bunch of people, but let's talk about Soldier Boy for a minute. You know, because you are the only, according to what he said when he when he uh, announced it, you are the only you, comedian. comedian that uh, uh, assigned to a rap label. Oh uh, yes. So uh, explain to me how you met Soldier Boy and how did you even end up being the first comedian signed to SOD Money Game? Uh, well, I met Soldier Boy in Vegas, and. I did it. A lot of people don't know I did his jury. Okay, mm. you did his jury. Yeah, 
Yeah, I did a lot of his uh, signature, his new signature pieces, the Soldier Boy chain with the gun, and the little the little character man. That's so you're his also face. a jewelry maker. Yeah, I'm a jeweler maker. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. So I had made that. Because, you know, Soldier Jury wasn't looking too good at one time. And then before, then after he met me, that's when he was on point. <laughs> wow. So, so and you met him and you were doing the jury. And so how do you get into a conversation about, hey, man, uh, uh, I want to sign with you or he signed, I'm a, or, 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 or he came to you or you came in. How did that happen? You know, during his jury, we got real close. Okay. He was calling me. He calling me at three in the morning. And I'm like, damn, Soulja Boy called me then. He got real close then. I got close with one of his uh, artists, too. So his artists used to tell him about me, too, as well. What artist is that? Uh, Beano Hood Trophy. Okay. And, uh, he used to tell Soldier like, yeah, Pancho G, man. Yeah. Ooh, ooh. Mm -hmm. Then Soldier just, you know, gravitated towards me. And then mm -hmm. after the uh, first piece I had made, he was like, man, you know what? I'm gonna sign you. He knew I was a comedian. He was like, I'm gonna sign you. We gonna make history. So he was like, after I made that first gun piece, that's when he had signed me. Wow. So and and when you after you made the first gun piece, did you um, basically? Uh, he say, I'm gonna sign you. I, yeah. I want to sign you. I want to sign you because he seen my work, and he was just like, man, you hilarious. And he was like, let's do something different. So he signed me. Wow, being that he's he goes back so far in the history, you know, like the dancing and the stuff that he you you know you seen him as you was coming up younger. Mm -hmm. um, what I mean when you first linked up with him, um, did you ever think that you and him would be friends at this? You know, during, you know. Well, I I visualized it. I always wanted to be a Soldier Boy homie for some reason. Are you? I serious? was always watching Soldier Boy before Soldier Boy really was Soldier Boy. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, you you definitely uh, you definitely um, uh, you you can't uh, you can't miss when you with Soldier Boy. Soldier Boy is some, one of the most phenomenal guys when it come down to reinventing himself. He's one of those guys that you just you can't you can't miss. You know, I, I listen to Snoop Dogg when he say that nigga don't miss. I mean, you know yeah. that nigga can't, that that Soldier Boy. You know he don't miss. That nigga don't miss. Every time you try to count that nigga out, he like a cat with nine lives. You throw him off the roof, he just keep caught, falling to his feet. Mm. He that that's that type of nigga. Like every session, that's what people don't like. That you know, I was. So so proud of him when I seen him on uh, Breakfast Club and other folk were talking and laughing and all that. But the way the nigga was speaking, I you know, far as I heard the hustle in him, you can laugh. But when mm -hmm. a nigga worth millions like that, you laughing, but it ain't that funny. You you can you can play games with him, but you can't never little boy him because at the end of the day, his legacy can't be denied. Yeah, and that's the thing we have revolutionized the game. So now you're gonna start seeing other right. people like. I'm a rap a lot But I'm a comedian, comedian You know what I'm saying Like I'm with OVO I'm a comedian mm -hmm. you And you'll hear Soldier Boy say I was the first one yeah. Yeah. He's gonna be like I'm the first Cause you know He like to brag about stuff He gonna stuff be like, like I'm the first That's right So he, he know it's coming He know it's coming So he like to just be on things early yeah. Yeah, and when he broke down that Draco thing, the reason why his name was Draco was to Charlemagne. I believe that nigga. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's his name. Yeah, yeah, he said yeah, nigga, yeah, mm -hmm. and 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 that's what I like about him. The nigga Draco Cortez. That's his yeah. name. So you can't take that mm -hmm. away from him, man. And you know, he then he said something about he was a he was on that first, you know, on that song that Migos got the the one they did from. Draco. Oh yeah, he that was, was his song first. He, so like, he actually invented drill music. But they ain't gonna give him the credit like that. He was uh, he was the first one to get on all them artists from Chicago. He was got he was on the all the first that. one. He got he was the first like major rapper to mess with any of them drill artists. Damn, I didn't know that. Mm. And he'll let you know that and one. He'll let you know. <laughs> but it's a fact. This Google. He on in the beginning, all them cheap key, all them songs, he was the first one to be on there to hop on them. And he he supported it. A1, yeah, famous Dex, A1. all them. Rich the Kid, everybody. I think he said Rich Kid, you sleep on his couch. Yeah, all them famous, everybody had to go through him. Damn. That boy don't miss. I told you, that nigga don't. I got to get that nigga on Boss Talk 101. That nigga got to be on here. I already know it. He know it's coming, though. As mm -hmm. I, every time I met him, the nigga was solid. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I just love the way the nigga just moved. And that's the thing. He not like that. Like, 
you everybody be like, damn, how soldier? you? Like, really, he really a chill person. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes I think he just go on, you know, action, and then he go crazy. Then it, as soon as it go cut, he back to being radical. Yeah, What's yeah. What's the most impactful thing you've learned from him? Uh, I mean, just being, just being an entrepreneur, like, being a leader, you know what I'm saying? Like, he a real leader, and he's like, he made me more boss than I ever been. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So he, I was already a boss, but he made me a bigger boss. Because wow. he's very, because he loves the business aspect of it. Because right now he doesn't do music as much as he used to. No, he just got the album out, and then he wrote a song about me on that oh, wow. called "I'm So Icy." Oh, so that that was big. Okay. Yeah, That's so cool. check that out. I'm so icy. Wow. Because cool. I had hooked him up. I did his jury, so he he gave me the shout out. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, and you still do his jewelry today? Yeah, I'm doing. I still do jewelry today. Okay. That's what I do. Vegas custom jewelry. That's what we do in Vegas. You make more money off of your jewelry than you do off of your comedy. Yeah, that's what my main answer. Was, you know, okay, income. but one day soon you'll make more money off of comedy. Yeah, yeah. What's I'm, the biggest event you've done? Uh, I did a few big events, but I probably got to say the Kenan Thompson show. I had did that twice. That was a big show. Um, Kenny Thompson had the I, the first one I did was right before the pandemic, mm -hmm. but so it kind of messed up everything. Mm -hmm. And then I just did one this year, Kenny Thompson. He wasn't there this year, but I still did the show, and okay. that was a big. It was at the L.A. Comedy Club out there in Las Vegas at the Stratosphere. So oh. that was. Big. Hold on, I want to go back to Soldier Boy. Okay, go ahead. I want to go back to Soldier Boy because I seen you on a picture with Soldier Boy, and I know Ti is into uh, comedy now, and uh, I'm just trying to see because was this the comedy Ti or was this the cut the Ti that rap that be like uh, the the one that say you might have seen me in the street, but <laughs> nigga, you don't know that old Ti. Which Ti was it? Was it the Ti right up here, the one that was on paper paperwork? Nah, that's oh, the oh, that's oh, the oh, recent Ti. Yeah. So he was the <laughs> comedian. Oh, okay. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. Let's try to break down so, with T.I. the nigga. And that, and that picture right there, he telling T.I. like, T.I., I got a comedian. He said, you doing all this comedy. He like, man, I got a comedian right now. So that gave T.I. the light bulb like, damn, mm -hmm. I'm going to have to sign somebody to Grand Hustle. So yeah. if y'all see somebody Grand Hustle, you already know. I'm curious. Why do you think T.I. started um, doing comedy? Uh... That bag, you know, you already branded, so it's like they gonna pay you anyway just because of your name. Mm. He they can just gotta, continue just doing music instead of doing comedy. You know, everybody want to put their foot in everything. You know, they want to get. You know, once you get your name and your brand ex established, mm -hmm. you down there could be in everything. Mm -hmm. So you gonna do whatever to oh. get all bags. Yeah, you're right because his ticket's not cheap at all. Yeah. At all, so he come in like he Bernie Mac, and he, he right. might be the worst person in the room. But Have he you still heard the jokes yet? Nah, but I, you know, I heard you know some days he had good days and some days he had bad days. You oh, know? Okay. <laughs> okay, but we all do. Yeah, that just that's what come with the territory of being a comedian. What type of comedian are you? I'm a trap com comic. Okay. Yeah, and I'm talking about prostitutes and how these niggas ain't shit. And, Females ain't shit, and we we just ain't shit. You know what I'm saying? Together. <laughs> I got you. I got you. Man. Man. So yeah. just, I just want to, like I said, um, I, I definitely want to commend you for being the first comedy, uh, a comic comedian that signed to a, 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 a rapper to a rap record label, independent, independent record label, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that's dope, man, for you to even be able to step up on that podium and be that guy you know what i'm saying so uh who who are some of the comedians that inspired you uh anybody from chicago but you know bernie mac one of my favorites and uh damon williams jess knees um like but robin harris was one of my favorites too so wow. yeah then i gotta say richard because you know he you know he from Everybody, illinois yeah. so you know, Midwest, the Midwest comedians, they pretty much, even the St. Louis guys, you know, the Tory brothers, you know, said the entertainer, all them. So, wow. So, when, you you got a movie that you're you're in. Let's talk about the movie a little bit. Um, 
how did you end up even being on this movie? And I'm hearing Twist and some more people. And what's the name of the movie? Uh, Primary Position. Primary Position. Yeah, yeah, I looked that up. And and you basically, how did you end up even getting a role in that movie? Um, well, one of my best friends, Hebno Carlito, he, he the one who produced and directed this movie. But he got our end up getting an all star cast. We got uh, Biggie in there. We got Chris Chris Lofton at like Bart. A lot of Chicago legends in there. Twister. That's the movie that Chris Lofton was in Chicago. Was it filming in Chicago? Yeah, yeah. That's where he filming it because we reached out to him and they said that he was in Chicago filming. Mm -hmm. So that's the show he filming. Yeah, he. Well, I think he lived there too. So oh, okay. Mm, he from Chicago. Okay. So yeah, but we got a lot of people that's from the Empire, all the pe Chicago people, people from the Shy. You know, a lot of Chicago legends. When I look down your uh, Instagram, I see people like Mike Tyson. I see people like Flavor Flav. I see people like Ti. I see people like Twister. Like you, you, you constantly dealing. You got uh, what's that other old boy, the comedian? I seen uh, T T K Kirkland. Yeah, T me and T K yeah, were yeah, real close. T K Kirkland. Yeah. Um, just a bunch of a litany of uh, people um, that you are constantly work, working either around or with. Man, how is it to be you know in those spaces and how do you stand on those type of stages? Um, man, you know, just being different. You know, if I'm around a basketball player, I ain't gonna go up to a basketball player and start talking basketball. I'm gonna say something else, talk about some music or something. But if I'm around a dude that do music, I probably gonna talk about some basketball, you know, because they get tired of listening to the same thing over and over. You know, like you go up to a rapper or a singer, they like, man, check out my mixtape. That's one thing I had got signed because I wasn't a rapper. I ain't have to go to Soldier and be like, check out my music and all that. You know what I'm saying? So, how do you feel about the stand up? And I know you've been in Vegas. You've seen him. He wanted the coldest to do it. I'm gonna shout that nigga out. He out of Kansas City, Missouri. They want a baddest comedian you ever want to hit. See, hit the stage. That boy Eddie Griffin. How do you feel about that boy when you see? Have you ever seen him do stand up? Oh yeah, you're a bad dude. Yeah, I love Eddie Griffin, man. He's a good person too in real life too. Yeah. yeah. How, how was it meeting him? Oh, Eddie showed us a lot of love, man. We was uh. We was at something in L.A. It was a big event. And he was like, man, come sit next to me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it was like him and his brother. Who, wow. uh, which one of them give you pointers, like have have really given you pointers, like when they seen you, they sit in on something that you were doing stand-up on? On uh, T.K. T.K., he said, yeah. man, this here and this, that. and yeah. T.K. He, T.K. is uh is with me all the time. He talked to me all the time, tell me this is what you need to do, this is how you need to do it. Ooh. And uh, him and Damon Williams from Chicago. Damon Williams, okay. Mm. So TK is and Damon Williams. Yeah, man. Spanky Hayes is another person that that's been there and took me under their wing and was like, "This my brother." Mm -hmm. Make sure you tell. Let's go back to the movie though. Just give me your role and 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 just give me as much as you can about what you do in the movie. Uh, well, T Twister and I we got a a bodega, a little stove. And it's just a one little scene. And uh, we just, uh, I'm, I have work at the stove. You know, that's it. It's just work at the stove. Work at the stove. <laughs> yeah, work at the stove, man, with Twister. He asked me, you know, you know, it's a little small role. It's, uh, that's yeah, what I was about to ask you. Is it a small role? Yeah, but you see role? me, though. It's like, I'm okay. there, you know. You make your presence known. Yeah. yeah. I got And you. then he got me... Uh, on one scene as well with my comedy on that. I was just about to, okay, yeah. I was about so to say, he, is it he a comedy? he like watching TV, but I'm on the TV with my comedy. So, so when is this supposed to release? Yeah, 11-11. Uh, you know okay. Yeah. Cool. 11-11, yeah. that's going to that's gonna be dope, that Remind man. us of the name? Primary Position. Primary, Primary position, position, man. And where can they find it? It's going to, I'm not sure what streaming service is going to be on, but... I'm t you're gonna see it. You're gonna okay. you're gonna go know that it. it's yeah. coming because okay. it's it's too many people on there not to know. Right. And you know the dude uh, Jamal that played Biggie, he on all them little right. movies, right. so it's one of them. Yeah. <laughs> right. He's a he's a great actor because yeah. that Biggie role, yeah. man, he nailed it. <laughs> yeah. He did. Man, just dope, dope, dope to be. Uh, 
affiliated with all these guys. They don't tell them where you end up because of all the opportunities, the doors that can open because of the way that you've laid the foundation for your career. You know, that's the, the thing that I like about you is that you're building these relationships, genuine relationships, mm -hmm. because you're out there grinding. Most people think they can get it and it's easy to come by and it's fly by night, man. But I got to tell you something, man, what God have for you, can't nobody hold it back. And the steps of a good man is ordered by the Lord. So when I see you walking in your steps, I understand. I see the greatness that God has pretty much prepared for you. Yeah, so you, you just got to you just got to keep on grinding. Yes, That's sir. all you got to do. You know what I'm saying? The way you doing is the way I did. You look at the wall, you see me. Mm -hmm. I'm the same way, man. I'm always trying to be in the middle of something. I'm always trying to figure out a way to stand on those stages. That's why I asked you, not mm -hmm. the stage you stand on when you do comedy, mm -hmm. but when you come into the room with these people and when you're dealing with these elite people who have somewhat establish their 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 careers in entertainment how are you standing on that stage to have those conversations i've often asked myself that and that's why i asked you that today mm -hmm. yeah this is what i do man this I, is I, being different you got to be different man you can't hit them with the same old okie doke yeah you know what i'm saying they get it all the time there's 10 30 people just hit them with the same okie doke so you got to come Different. different. You got to come different. You know, the the, the check it man is in the building. Uh, that's what they're going to get when they see ECEO. It ain't nothing. I, and it's been the same old two step for me. You know what I'm saying? When you are, when you are older cat and you're trying to figure out ways to be something to where the younger generation can look at you. Because really, I, I really I, I, I'm cool with standing on those stages. But the most important thing is that the people that's watching us do our thing are able to see something in us, the younger generation, that they'll be able to look at and keep a steady way in life. I don't need them to aspire to be like me. I want them to be better than me. Mm -hmm. But I want to look, be, at, want them to be able to look at something that's presentable in a way to where they can say, you know what, if he did that, I can do this on a greater level. And that's what I want to do. I want to inspire, you know, young black men, you know, to tell them, like, you ain't got to be on that street life. It's other things. It's bigger things to do. It's bigger fish to fry. You know, I tell everybody, like, that come from wherever city you come from, wherever hood you come from, make sure you leave. You know, I come from Chicago, but I had got on in Vegas. Mm -hmm. So, you, you know, you get, you know, you become somebody once you leave your comfort zone. No, one hundred. I, I definitely agree with that. What does it? What did Dolph mean to you? I seen you had him on your page. I mean, you, you. What did it mean to you, or did it touch you a certain way when you found out that he had passed away, had been murdered? What did that? What? How did that affect you? Uh, I love Dolph. That was one of my favorite rappers. I listen to Dolph, him and Key Glock. You know, I actually got to say I've been to a Dolph concert, so that was. Dope, you know, it's like being at a Tupac concert. Everybody ain't get a chance to see mm -hmm. Tupac and Elvis and all them. So it's like, man, I be, I was able to go to a dope concert. But what's so ironic? After all that, probably two weeks later, that's when I got signed. Wow. So it was crazy, and then you know, Soldier was going through it with them, and it was crazy. Everybody was scared for me. I was you, like, man, you part of them. They probably think, you know, I'm like, nah, I ain't got nothing to do with this. Yeah. <laughs> you know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you walk by faith, not by yeah. sight. And, yeah. and at the end of the day, uh, you just doing something to establish your career. I just seen you at posting them and, and it seemed like it was love. Yeah, so. I loved Dolph. He was one of the greatest ever. He was one of the greatest dead rappers in the, ever. Like, you know, a lot of people just be saying Tupac and Biggie just because it sound good. But in real life, to me, Dolph was the greatest. Right. Wow, that's a big, that's a big, you know, that cause you young. I ain't gonna say Dolph not the greatest, mm. but I am gonna say. Um, as far as this generation. As far as this generation, yeah. to be an independent yeah. millionaire and stood on his mm. own too and did it on his own, you can't take nothing from him. That's yeah. the thing. You can't take nothing from him. I love, I was I was just talking about him today, actually, with my wife. I said, you you remember, I said, I like Dolph, but I was a big Key Glock fan. Mm -hmm. Didn't you remember me saying that? Wow. Uh, I'm like an old nigga in here, t what was it, about five, four or five years ago, three years ago. Listening to Key Glock. Key Glock. Mm -hmm. I said, babe, put that Key Glock on, and I just rock and out I, to I that. I to shake she's, just, she's like, this nigga crazy. I like, love Key Glock. That was one of my favorites, and I'm too. like, this nigga is rapping, nigga. Put that mm -hmm. nigga Key Glock in. Let me just, you know, do my thing in here. I'm a hustle today. You know what I'm saying? That Key Glock is that hustling music for me. I go get it when I put that Key Glock Cause I, you know, no, you know, I love Nipsey Hustle, but I was more of a Dolph fan. Than a Nipsey, Nipsey fan. fan. 
Wow. Yeah, I, man. I didn't get to meet Dolph, but I met Nipsey. Mm. So I and I went to Nipsey's store a lot of times. So I had a different type of. Uh, a, a, a relationship with him because of that because being a black business owner a store owner like himself mm -hmm. we both own stores he was on Slauson and Crenshaw mine over here off Elam Peachtree so you know what and I'm black and my family worked in this store so it made sense when me and my wife would go up there shout out to my brother he like man you need to go over there and see see uh, uh, Nipsey and that was after I had met him too I just I met him but then years later I ended up just going to his store not when he got shot and all that mm -hmm. before all that I would always frequent that store man just just love the fact that you came through and rocked out with us man uh, uh top three uh comedians of all time dead or alive number one uh bernie mac number two robin hair number three martin lawrence dope that martin lawrence one boy that's the one for me I right i want to know your top three artists of all time dead or alive any genre you're talking about oh you gotta say soldier oh uh, oh soldier greatest rapper ever <laughs> 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 hey, you gonna say it too if he put you mm -hmm. on you gonna you gonna say it yeah, you know number two number two cameron that boy Cameron in that pink you like when that nigga said this yeah. is the deal that's my homie you know? me and Cameron real close too oh yeah yeah how you and Cameron get to know each other I'm gonna get that, that third one though that was one of my favorite rappers in the world like you know I believe in the law of attraction so man when I was 14 years old I was always listening to him and when I turned 25 I got to know him and I've how been did you him. meet him I met him and I'm, I used to live in Harlem and I met one of his close friends Tino, uh, Tito and Tito was like, man, we gonna come to Chicago. When I come to Chicago, I'm gonna introduce you to Killer. So we was in Chicago, we was at a club, he did a show, I was on stage with him. And that was my first time meeting him. And uh, when the first time we met him, we kicked it all night. Mm -hmm. To like, I ain't get home until like 10 in the next morning. Mm -hmm. So it was like, we got real close then. When I got to Vegas, he got a crib in Vegas. So it was like, and then one of his best friends lived in my apartment complex. Okay. So it was like, it was meant. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. So it was like, we was kicking with camera on all the time. Wow. Mm -hmm. Man, I just, it's dope the way you explain it and express it, man. Uh, uh, you know, the fact that camera on Killer Cam, Killer, mm -hmm. that nigga that was rapping back in the days, him and, him and uh, Mace was uh, best friends. And yeah, Mace was, Mace, Mace got fly, Flies hell around that biggie mm. time, man. That nigga will fly, fly. And uh, did he say he signed to something? I don't know who he's just signed to. Is it Death Row or something? Oh, Cameron? Mace. Uh, I don't he know. just did something. He be tripping. Mace, Mace was taking somebody. He was taking Fogiato money. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I know. I know that part. Damn. He, he took that money. He was like, I'm Diddy 2.2. <laughs> 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 he know exactly what he's doing. He's like, this is how they do it. That's like, the boys in Harlem, he said right? He gave him 5000 Damn. That was it. That was what he got for his deal. Man, wow. so that's Man. that's that's the way you know. I don't How know. do people can do that? Give five thousand for a deal and people accept it. You broke. But still, if I got forty dollars in my pocket and somebody say, "Man, I need," I'm gonna give you five thousand. You looking like, hey. <laughs> he get this five thousand. Is that the kind? Of, is, is that Cam, them, Cam, them was playing with some paper. Cam on McDonald's. Oh, he yeah, did. He, he on, still he on, on the McDonald's. He on a lot of stuff. Car wash. Yeah. Hurricanes. All types. Yeah. Of that nigga real go get him, man. Cam run. So man. what's your number three? Uh, I say Gucci. Hey, yeah. that my boy yeah. right there, old Gucci, Gucci man. Yeah, get him in now. Get him in now. Yeah. Man. So man, uh, how can people get a hold of you if they trying to reach out? Man, you could just look me. I'm only I'm the only Poncho G in the world. So just Google me. I'm pop straight up. Damn my, follow my cash up. Damn. Damn man. man. G. And did we I think we got everything. And thank you so much for coming on Boss Talk 101. Man, thank y'all for talk. inviting me, man. I man. love y'all, man. Say love you more, bro. Man. Don't do that, bro. For it's real, a love man. machine over here, man. We for met real. you in Vegas. It was destined to happen. You mm -hmm. here now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so it's going down, man. Holla at your boy. It's a unique oh, yeah. hustle, man. And we out. And yeah. we out.